Hey friends, how y'all doing today? Tyra here with Inspired Life, where hearts are inspired to live fully mind, body, spirit, and even in their parenting. Yes, because I have six children, I do a lot of talking on parenting. I'm also the director and have been for seven years of a mom's group. So having seven children of my own, having raised my sister and being the director of a mom's group gives me lots to talk about on the subject of parenting. So I thank you for joining me today. We are in the middle of 21 days of purposeful prayer for children. Yes, you heard that right. 21 days straight, we're beseeching the throne of heaven on behalf of our children. We are on day 13. So if this is your first time joining us today, welcome, welcome, welcome to Inspired Life. We have been praying fervently for the last 12 days for your children and for mine. So today's day 13. I missed you all a ton yesterday. Yesterday was jam-packed. Listen, if you missed me at the book signing yesterday, I thank you to those who showed up. Hey, Faith, how are you today? I pray that you are holding fast to your faith, my friend. Listen, if you guys did not join me yesterday um, at the book signing, no worries. You can still get your hands on a copy of the book, Purposeful Parenting, by going to Amazon and getting the ebook or the print copy. It would make a blessed gift for a friend. So if you want to bless a friend with a Christmas gift, the book Purposeful Parenting is something you need. You're holding fast? Yes, honey. Hold fast to your faith. And when it seems fleeting, when it seems like it's not present, when it feels like it's slipping through your fingers, you just think about your own name and how your name will bless you. Your own name will bless you. And it will speak faith to you even, my sweet faith. So make sure you guys get your hands on your copy if you were unable to join. We had a wonderful time yesterday at the Living Well ABC store in Silver Spring, Maryland. I tell you, I was in my happy place. I mean, Christian books and wellness foods. Ah, it was awesome. I should, well, the, that book is purposeful parenting is for parents and that book is all about getting the parent's heart right so that they could give children the love they need and deserve. So yes, Faith, that book, the audience is primarily parents, grandparents, educators. It's not for the children. Oh, yes, your own name. You're holding fast to that one. So purposeful parenting is about the parents and what we need to do in order to be able to love our children without reservation. It's all about how we change our hearts to give children the love they need and deserve. So yes, the parents are the audience for, um, for that book. Oh, that's okay, sweetie. No worries. No worries. Thanks for clearing that up. So today we are talking. Did y'all see that title? armed and dangerous, armed and dangerous. I was going another direction for today's prayer, but the Lord took me over here because the Lord reminded me today that our praise is a weapon and that if we're going to use our weapons of warfare that are mighty, right? They're not carnal. They're mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. If we are going to arm our children to use their weapons, we got to teach them what weapons they have and how they can wield those weapons, not only defensively, but to be on the offense. So somebody needs this word. I probably need this word. My children need this word because God changed the trajectory of what we were talking about today to ensure that our children are armed and they are dangerous. They are dangerous because they are going to inflict damage on the enemy's camp. Honey, listen, we're going to end this with some praise. God done give me a whole lot of gifts, faith, but the gift of singing ain't one of them. But I already got my song lined up right here that we're going to play. Um, my husband was working from home today 
And so, you know, in between his work and he had come to the kitchen where I was working and the same song had been on for over an hour. And he's like, you still listening to that same song? Yes, I am. Because I was warring. Okay. I was listening to that same song on repeat, on repeat, on repeat, because I was getting ready for y'all. I was getting ready for whatever God is doing right now with this word. And yes, it was the same song. And I have a feeling I'm going to listen to it all day and I'm going to play it for y'all before we get off the broadcast. Yes, our children, Shamika, will be armed and dangerous, dangerous to inflict uh, destruction on the enemy's camp. Did the word of God not tell us in Genesis, in Genesis, that the seed would crush the serpent's head. So it's your seed. It is your children in standing up in their place of power and authority that is going to crush the serpent's head. So let's get into the meat of the word today. We got so much to cover y'all. So I'm going to need somebody on the case um, for me, Faith and Shamika, to help me when to drop the scriptures in here. Okay. So let us look at our foundational scripture for today. Make sure y'all share the broadcast. Um, yes. Oh, distraction, disruption, because that's what praise does, right? Praise confuses the enemy. Praise will cause the enemy to kill themselves. And all we got to do is stand back and watch. Glory to God. Let us look at the, y'all, I'm fired up. I'm going to pause and slow down so I can catch my breath. Okay. 2 Corinthians 10 3 through 4. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 4. No, I'm not going to calm down. You see, Tyra and herself want to be composed, wants to come on here and be the Bible teacher. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit takes over me and I go get excited. So in just that fraction of a moment, I was trying to reel myself in, Tyra was, trying to tame herself because I don't want to be extra and be too much. But you know what? The Holy Spirit is extra. This subject matter is extra. God's word is extra. So permission to be extra. I'm not going to try to corral the Holy Spirit. I am not going to try to cage the Holy Spirit. Whatever the direction of the broadcast, Father, I repent for trying to um, package you and box you in. So Holy Spirit, have your way. Let me just pray right now before we even begin. This whole thing is moving somewhere else. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just plead the blood of the broadcast. I plead the blood of Jesus over everyone watching the live and the replay, Father God. I Thank you, I thank you, I thank you that your warring angels are dispatched even now. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for the legions that you dispatch. I thank you, Father, that you are Jehovah Sebaoth. I thank you, Father, that you are Jehovah Gabor. So we are calling on you, Jehovah Gabor, mighty man of war, to war for us even now as we intercede for our children. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We thank you for the blood in Jesus' name. Okay. Yeah, girlfriend, listen. I ain't going to calm it down. Tyra in her flesh self and wanting to be in her teacher mode might have wanted to calm down. But the Holy Spirit said, nah, we're not doing that. We're not caging in. This is what he just told me. That I'm not going to cage in the spirit. So, not going to happen. Um, let me too just say my computer just went off, okay? So now I'm going to have to reboot the computer, which has the notes. But nonetheless, um, excellent. I'm glad you're listening while you're getting ready for school. So you'll be armed. You'll yourself be armed. So you'll be arming your children, but you'll be armed. Okay, here we go. So our scripture for today, 2 Corinthians 10 verses 3 through 4. Though we live in this world, we do not wage war as the world does, okay? So the world don't play fair and the devil don't play fair. So we cannot use earthly tactics to wage war. The Bible says this, the weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. 
So we know the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Our children will not be entangled, ensnared, enmeshed, overcome by strongholds because we are going to empower them with the weapons of their warfare. Now, back on day three, we pray that our children would be kept from the evil one. If y'all missed day three, go ahead and catch that replay. But on day three, we pray because that, you know, that's, that was Jesus's prayer when he taught his disciples how to pray to be kept from the evil one. So that's what we pray. But there are times when we open the door to the evil one. You see, he cannot come without permission, without access granted. And so there are times with um, our verbal contracts through um, maybe games that our children play, through images that they see, through television, through music, through sinful behavior. Sometimes there are things that our children and that we engage in that open the door, open the portal, give access to Satan. So should we not have the scenario where we pray they be kept from the evil one, but should we knowingly or unknowingly grant access what are we going to do? So today we're going to be talking about some defensive and offensive strategies to ensure that our children are armed and dangerous. If you're able, go ahead and drop this in the comments. The first thing that we're going to do to arm them is the word of God. So number one, right, Shamika, unfortunately, these, these gateways, these entry points, there are breaches in the wall. There are portals that are opened through sin, through um, even activity, you know, it's certain kind of, of music, um, verbal declarations and things that we say out of our mouths give this access and this entry point. So we're going to go ahead on and seal those breaches today. And how we're going to do that point number one is by the word of God by the word of God. So the word of God, so the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So then what are they if they're not carnal? Come on, tell me, Jesus, give us revelation. One of the war, the weapons of our warfare that are not carnal is the word of God. So point number one, the word of God. We see in Matthew 4, Jesus when he is being tempted, when he was in the wilderness for 40 days, he used the word of God to silence the enemy. So we have to ensure that we're teaching our children the word of God. It says in the Psalms, hide your word in my heart and I'll hide your word in my heart so that I don't sin against you. On your word, on your law, I will meditate day and night. So it's number one. Somebody drop that in there. Thank you, Faith. Point number one. The word of God is our weapon. So today we're talking about our children being armed and dangerous. And what are the weapons of our warfare? And weapon number one is the word of God. Let's look at weapon number two. Weapon number two is the blood of Jesus. Come on, somebody. The blood of Jesus is our weapon number two. We're pleading the blood over our children, over our homes. Do you all see in some communities where people actually paint their doors red? Why are they painting their doors red? Even non-believers have red painted door. They may know or they may not know that they are symbolically trying to cover themselves in the blood, the blood on the doorpost being that seal so you don't gain access and you don't gain entry. So the blood of Jesus, what does it tell us in Revelation 12, 11. How did they overcome? They overcame him, him being the enemy by the blood of the lamb in the word of the testimony. The word of God tells us in Hebrews 12 and 24 that the blood of Jesus speaks better than that of Abel. So the blood speaks. So when you plead the blood, it's going to speak to your enemy. It's going to tell your enemy to back up. 
So point number two are weapons of warfare that are not carnal, but are mighty in God. Our point number two, our weapon is the blood of Jesus. Weapon number three, Keisha. Oh my God, girl. I was trying to reel this thing in. The Holy Spirit said, no, you're not going to reel it in today. You're going to come. I had a different message for today, but the Lord dropped this one on me, y'all, as I was in my kitchen trying to cook. Totally changed the trajectory. Woo. So we just going with it. Weapon number three, y'all ready? Drop this in the comments. The name of Jesus. So we done said, number one, the word of God. Number two, the blood of Jesus. Number three, the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee, every knee, every demonic imp's knee, every demon's knee, every knee will bow. It will bow, bow down. It will bow down. It will bow down at the name of of Jesus. We got to teach our children when you don't know what to do, when you don't know what to do, when you don't know who to call, when you don't know what to say, when you can't get nothing else out, Jesus. At the name of Jesus, J-E-S-U-S, -S, Yeshua HaMashiach, at that name, everything comes to a cease and desist, okay? At the name of Jesus. So that is our number three. Point number four, our weapons of our warfare that are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Point number four is your praise. Put a praise in your mouth. Despite what our natural eye sees, oh God, we are going to praise him. So our praise is a mighty, mighty, mighty weapon. Somebody drop that in there. Praise. It says he inhabits, he inhabits the praises of his people. So when we teach our children to praise God and they can praise him with the words of their mouth, with the meditation of their heart, with their bodies offered as a living sacrifice, with their bodies in dance. David got undignified and he danced before the Lord. When we teach them various methods and modes of praise, Praise silences the enemy, confuses the enemy, disrupts the enemy's plans. He inhabits the praise of his people. So when we're praising, he comes. And you know when he comes, the enemy going to get scared. So if we just praise alone, that invites him into the atmosphere. So what happened when Jehoshaphat was facing the Moabites and the Ammonites. What did he do? Who did Jehoshaphat send before the army? He sent the Levites. Jehoshaphat was like, Lord, here they come. They coming to get us. What we going to do? What we going to do? He sought the Lord's wisdom. And the Lord gave him a strategic plan on how to be victorious over the Moabites and the Ammonites. And what he said was send the singers, send the praisers, send the Levites out before, ahead of the army. And what did they do? They praised the Lord. And what happened in 2 Chronicles chapter 20? Oh, go read that when y'all get a chance. It's real good. They were victorious. So praise is our weapon. What point we on? We on point number five. Are we on point number five? Donning the full armor of God. Donning the full armor of God from head to toe, from head to toe. Walking them through those verses, teaching them they've got to put on their own armor. They've got to put on their own armor. They've got to pick it up and put it on. So you know what we do, parents? We supply the armor, right? We supply the tools. I talked about this the other day, two days ago. We give them the tools and the toolkit. We supply the armor, right? But they got to pick it up and put it on. So we've got to continue to encourage them. Now, mom, dad, we've equipped you. This is what we're saying to our children. I have equipped you with how to defeat the enemy. I have equipped you with how to deal with those thoughts running through your mind. 
I have equipped you when someone at school is trying to tell you to sin or invite you into sin. I have equipped you. Now you have to use the tools that I've given you. And so their tools are their armor shod from head to toe. Y'all know the verses, but are we teaching them to our children? And are we encouraging them to daily put them on? Because we know that our enemy is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But he's not a roaring lion because the lion of the tribe of Judah is the roaring lion. Okay? He's like, he's a fraud. He's an imposter. And I'm tired of him messing with people. He's getting on my daggone nerves. <laughs> Shucks. So friends, we are going to teach our children how to arm themselves. And we're going to do that by teaching them the word of God, by teaching them to meditate scripture so that they have it hidden in their hearts. And that means we might need to be doing that too, right? We not, might need to be meditating on the verses. When the last time y'all done memorized the new verse? Don't give me crickets. When is the last time you have memorized a new scripture. I'm going to sit back and wait for somebody to tell me. Yes, Shay. You have, oh girl, you're going to catch the replay. It's going to be mm -mm good too. Just pray before you do. Cause today we're talking about putting our armor on and we going in. So we need to pray. When, thank you, Faith. It's crickets. Shamika. Come on, Pastor Oliver. When is the last time y'all done memorized a new scripture. Come on, Siobhan. Sh Listen, Siobhan holding it down for y'all. Siobhan's holding it down for y'all. Good going, Siobhan. So this is my um, encouragement for you viewers today. When you get off this broadcast, you pick a verse. And not the shortest one in the Bible, Jesus wept. We, you know that one already. Pick a verse for whatever your current situation is. And hold on to that. Memorize it. Write it in your head, your heart, on your forehead. Bind it to your wrist. Isn't that what it says in Deuteronomy? So not only are we telling them that's what they need to do, we need to be showing it by example. So I know that you all are hungrily seeking God, hungrily chasing after him. But remember to also do that by hiding that word in your heart. Because sometimes you can't pick up your Bible. It's been a couple of months. That's okay, boo. Come on. Today is, a, today is a day. New mercy. New mercy today. So today is a great day to pick up a new one. Today is a great day. So that's your homework. Is your new memory verse. And I'm going to check in with y'all in a week. And you're going to tell me what it was. Okay? Y'all, we had a good one today. We had a good one. So this is how we're going to arm our children and they're going to be dangerous. Let's just recap. We're going to arm them with the word of God. We are going to teach them that the blood of Jesus is a weapon, a mighty weapon, a weapon that brings everything to a cease and desist. The same thing for the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. They must see us living it, right? With the example, we go before them. Our praise is our weapon and the full armor of God. So those are our five, I was going to say four, five strategic steps for how we're arming our children and for how they will be mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. We know the word says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So if they ain't fighting, People ain't punching somebody in the eye in school. Then how are they supposed to fight? We just gave the five steps. Okay. And those five steps are not only applicable for them, but for us too. Right, y'all? Yes. And we know that our praise is our weapon. So y'all listen to this. We're gonna, we just going to praise for one minute. If I had uh, Mrs. Oliver over here with me, she would be praising with me, man. This girl... She flows in many, many gifts. She can sing. She can paint. She can speak prophetically. I mean, she just flows in it. Lord gave me a whole lot of gifts, but singing ain't one of them. He probably knew I would 
pervert the gift. So I'm glad he didn't give it to me because I might have not honored it so well. A whole lot of gifts, but singing ain't one of them. But look, listen here. Here we go right here. When we get off the broadcast, I'm going to drop this song in the comments so y'all can continue to listen to it. But y'all going to listen to it for just a minute with me and we're going to turn up and we're going to have a party, okay? Because this is how we're defeating the enemy. This is how we are causing confusion, confusion, disruption on the enemy's plans. On the, the enemy's plans for us to, are, are to bring us harm and to bring our children harm. But we know that God's plans as said in Jeremiah 29 and 11 are to give us a future and hope and an expected end. Listen to this. shall be saved our sons and daughters shall prophesy that is um eddie james lift him high maybe i'm gonna drop it in the comments after the broadcast okay y'all so we fired up we fired up we plead in the blood we've called on his name so guess what whatever plots schemes tricks ensnarement that the enemy thought he had for your children in mind today his diabolical scheme the lord just shed the light of truth on it the lord has sent his mighty mighty angels ahead to dispel it they're causing confusion in their own camp and they're killing each other off and do you know what happens after that we done seen it so many times in the word, so many times in the word where there was an army coming up against us. And then when they could cause confusion on their own camp, all we did was go in and reclaim the spoils of war. Y'all, this is all we got to do. This is all we got to do. All we got to do is follow the prescription, follow the plan. And then not only are we victorious, but we get to go in and we get to recover. We get to reclaim. We get recompense. We get our stuff back. Oh, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. What was your word yesterday, Shay? What was your word? Type it in. Type it in. Type it in. Tell us what your word was yesterday because we're just cementing it. We're just sealing it. We recover, we reclaim, and we get recompense. Recompense. Recovery, reclaim, recompense of all our stuff. Y'all know I done going through a catalog from when I was a little girl and thought about all the stuff the enemy done stole from me. From the time I was a little girl, all the stuff he done stole from me. And the Lord told me that last year, this year was my year of recompense. I'm still looking for some of the return. I would, I, in my mind, I was thinking everything. I was thinking, wow, I remember when I was 12, I lost my money for my class ring. Um, I was going to buy the class ring for middle school. I was 12, about to be 13, put the money on the thing, and I lost the money. I won my money back. When I was in ninth grade, somebody stole my Swatch watch. I won it back. When I was a child, a relative took something fragile, something delicate from me directly. I told him I want it back. Everything, 
everything that the enemy done stole from you and from your children. We want it back. We want it back. We want it back. We want it back. Recovery. Recompense. Yes. Oh, good girl. Good girl. Good girl. At a shout. When did the walls come down, right? At the shout, the walls came down. The walls came down. Now, Mr. Kingsland. So, yes, day before yesterday, we had Joaquin Kingsland join the broadcast. I told y'all Mr. Kingsland is um, working from home today. And he is coming in here. But we, we trembling on the enemy's head today. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Did he just do that, y'all? Do not laugh. So two days ago, my six-year-old came in the broadcast, and I told y'all one of the reasons why I don't go live is because I it's all about me and I don't I don't want embarrassment. Y'all see my face turning red? Am I am I turning red? I'm I'm I think I'm turning red right here. That is my boo. Why he coming here being silly? But you know what? It's a beautiful thing because he keeps me lighthearted because I'm like way too serious. I'm way too intense. And that been my boo thing since I was 18 years old. So we've been together more than half our lives. So we have a lot of fun together. But, you know, in my mind, this is a real serious broadcast and we trampling on the head of the enemy. But doesn't our joy... Isn't the joy of the Lord which gives us strength a weapon to? Because the enemy comes and tries to make us depressed, dejected, despondent. But isn't joy the opposite of those things? So I thank Mr. Kingsland for bringing us another weapon of our warfare. And that is going to be joy. Joy, 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 joy. That's going to be another weapon of our warfare. We had five, but how about six? How about six? Thanks, Mr. Kingsland, for bringing um, this prophetic word right here. Joy. Joy is another weapon of our warfare. Last week, my kids were out playing in leaves, right? And I just told y'all I could be real serious, real focused. Okay, we're going to play in the leaves for 15 minutes. I'm going to rake a pile, jump in, jump out. Let's go in. But you know what the Lord said? Girl, have some joy. Jump in the pile. And I had to go in and jump on the leaf pile. So that's point number six. Somebody drop it in the comments. Point number six, the weapons of our warfare that are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, joy. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Don't you need something strong to pull down a stronghold? Hey, there it is. Joy. The joy of, our, of the Lord is our strength. Strength to be mighty for pulling down of strongholds. There we go. Number six, joy. Number six, joy. Yes. Shay, number six, joy. So permission for joy. Enter into his joy. His joy is our strength. Joy is the fruit of the spirit. The enemy first tried to tempt Eve with a piece of fruit, but we reclaiming our fruit. We reclaiming the fruit of joy. You're not going to rob our joy. You're not going to steal us of our joy. Now the Lord said, here we go again. The Lord gave me a prophetic word for November. And that word was, we were going to have raucous, gut-busting laughter. I guess Mr. Kingsley came to bring, bring some of that in here. That was the word the Lord spoke over me and my house and a few of my friends for November. That we were going to have laughter. Gut-busting, raucous, funny, permission to laugh. And Mr. Kingsley came and bought us a laugh. It's coming. Yes, our joy is coming in the morning. Come on. Help me preach, Adrian. Help me preach this message. Our joy cometh in the morning and our morning is now. Our morning is now because we've traded morning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G for morning. Today, our morning, our morning is gone. It's our morning now. And our M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G is gone. Our morning is gone because it's a new morning. Joy cometh in the morning, it's here. It's here, it's here, it's here. So I love you ladies. I'm gonna drop that Eddie James um, song in the comments. This whole day took another turn. We were supposed to be talking about something else, but the Lord said we needed to cover these areas. If you missed any of the beginning of this broadcast, isn't God so good? Yes, permission 
to laugh. Permission to laugh. The Bible says that laughter is good medicine. And it says the opposite of that is it'll dry your bones. If you all, you know, shriveled up and despondent, you'll be sick, literally. It'll dry up your bones. So laughter is good. Exercise your abdominal muscle. That'll be your ab workout. That'll be your ab workout. Have some good laughs. Thank you, Shamika. Is that is that the um, Proverbs 17, 22? Is laughter is good medicine, right? Yes, permission for laughter. You want you want work your abs? You want flat stomach? Laugh some more. Have some laughs. Do that instead of trying to do some crunches. Do some laughs. That'll work them ab muscles real good. So my friends, you got your weapons. If you missed any of the broadcast, go back and check the replay. If you haven't shared the broadcast, please do because this one was mm, mm, good. So our households are armed, armed with our six strategic steps, our six strategic steps that are mighty in God, our weapons, mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. So my friends, it has been my privilege, my prayer, my honor to be with you today. Um, this week, we're going to be praying for our children's minds, for their bodies, and for their spirits. But maybe we had to cover this ground first to a protection as we go into those areas, okay? So I will look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow for our lunchtime broadcast where we eat real, real, real good. We eat real good at this table. This has been a great time together. And you all pray for me because my prayer is for us to, at the conclusion of this, for um, me to actually make these 21 days into a book. So somebody pray for me. I'm just going to go ahead on and put that out in the atmosphere now. Maybe it's a form of accountability. Um, but it is my prayer for us to take all the work we've done here and to put this in a prayer format so we can continue to stand on this word when these broadcasts are done. Okay. Yes. Good food. Good food. Three weeks, but three hours learning another scripture. Okay. 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 Good. Do I do cooking videos? I have in the past. I haven't. Shay. I haven't done cooking videos in a while. I used to come on on Sundays and I used to do cooking videos on Sundays. Um, there may be some on my Inspired Life page or some here on my personal page somewhere. So I, do you want me to do that? Do you guys want me to do cooking videos? I, I probably could do that for y'all. Today, um, I cooked some stuffed acorn squash for my dinner. So we're having stuffed acorn squash and it's stuffed with quinoa. Um, so it's quinoa in there, currants, sun-dried tomato, mushroom, and fresh thyme and rosemary. And I think I'm going to make some greens to go with that. So I need to. And then for lunch, I made a um, farro salad. The recipe for the farro salad is on my website. So Shay, if you go to my website, which is uh, www.inspiredtolivefully.com, on inspiredtolivefully.com, you will find a lot of my original recipes, okay? So make sure you go over there, Shay. And I will work on that. Pray that God give divine strategy, Shay, on how I can actually produce some cooking videos. Because that's my happy place in the kitchen. It's really, really my happy place. But I'm so in the zone when I'm in there. I haven't figured out how to record. Thank you for dropping that in the comments. Thank you. Um, I haven't really figured out how to record in the kitchen right with me cooking. You know, because I'm like focused. I'm in the zone when I'm cooking. And I haven't figured out the whole recording bit. I need some tech help there. So I hope to do that, Shay. Bring some cooking videos to you. But in the interim, check out the website. Okay. And if you haven't seen Shay, the, you probably have. Watch those videos on my um, Alkaline Journey called Level Up. Maybe you've seen those. Those are pretty good. Those may give some additional insight too. And I will come back at some point, maybe when we finish this, and do some more teachings on that, what that whole Alkaline Journey looked like. But right now, my heart is committed to this 21 days of prayer. And I can't overwhelm myself with too many thoughts at one time. 
Because y'all know in the meantime, in between time, I got six kids in real life, right? IRL, I got six kids, 10th grade through two years old. So it is always on and hopping over here. So I thank you guys for praying for me. Um, did we close out in prayer yet? And did we go into overtime? Did I pray? I can't even remember. See what happens when people came in? <laughs> did I pray yet? I can't remember. Somebody tell me, did we pray already? I mean, like really pray and seal all of what we talked about in prayer in the end of the video. Did I pray yet? Did I pray us close? I can't remember y'all. I'm having mom brain right now. We just praised. Okay, so let us, that's why I'm still talking on the broadcast because we ain't prayed close yet. Okay, thank you, Shay. Thank you, Shay. So let us look to the Lord in prayer. We're going to seal this all in prayer. Okay, let us look to the Lord. God, you are awesome. Jesus, you ride in on your white horse with the declaration that you are the alpha, the omega, that you are the king of kings and the Lord of lords. We thank you, God, that you go before us. Jehovah Sebaoth, you are the mighty man at the front of the battle, the head of the battle. You, God, are Jehovah Gabor, the mighty man of war who contends with those that contend with us. So that is who we are calling on now. We are calling on you, Sabaoth. We are calling on you, Gabor, to war and contend for us and for our children. We thank you, God, for giving us our strategic plan because we know that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. So we thank you for our weapons of our warfare that we will be utilizing and training our children, supplying them with the tools to use. They will use the name of Jesus. They will use the blood of Jesus. They will use the word of God. They will use their praise. They will use joy. They will use all of their weapons, Lord God, to defeat the enemy. They will also use their weapons, not only from a defensive standpoint, but from an offensive standpoint as they move forward in the things of God, as they move in purpose, as they head toward their destiny, as they walk out the purposes and plans that you have for their lives. We thank you, Jesus, that your blood covers them, that it protects them. We thank you, Jesus, that the praise confuses the enemy, that causes dissension in the enemy's camps, that causes chaos, that causes utter destruction of themselves, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We thank you that at your word, the word of God, with the word of God, it is a mighty weapon. It is a sword. We thank you, God, that with your word, even Jesus used your word to silence the mouth of the enemy, God. We thank you. We thank you that joy is strength. And with strength, this is how we pull down strongholds, God. We thank you. We thank you for arming us as we arm our children, as we pass along these tools to them so that they can win in life and be victorious in you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, we pray, we seal this prayer in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. If you guys missed any of this broadcast, you go back and catch the replay because the whole thing was fire. We had a good, good time today. So I will look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow, tomorrow. And as always, it is my prayer that you've been inspired to live fully. God bless and take care.